I don't care how internally motivated an athlete is, they're constantly looking for extra motivation, external motivation, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to use this now. A team that didn't fall into traps in trap games anyway. A team coached by Mike Tomlin that takes every opponent seriously. Nevertheless, is going to be even more intense for the rest of this season. Because for the second time, well, it's more than two times, but it's with two different teams. The Titans and the Ravens, probably the two toughest teams on their schedule so far, right? They have to postpone things. They have to move things around. Whether or not it's medically the responsible things to do, they're going to think, and they said, we're getting jobbed here. So they don't get enough respect. Then they feel like they're getting jobbed by happenstance or by the league or by their arch rivals, the Ravens. It doesn't have to be perfectly rational. It just has to be the way they feel. I believe they're going to use this as motivation. I think we're going to see the best version of the Steelers, partly as a result of this from here on out. I think they just got even more dangerous. I think you're reaching. I think you're reaching. I don't think that I, I, whatever you're seeing from the Steelers, I don't think it's going to be because of what has transpired here. And Dan, by the way, I do like the jacket. It's just that the zipper threw me off because it's over your right shoulder. But that's neither here nor there. I'll get back Thanks, to that buddy. later some other time. Thank you. Here's the bottom line with the Steelers. Here's the bottom line with the Steelers. Everybody walked into this season knowing that change was going to take place. Like, it wasn't the September, if you remember the September 11th attacks in 2001, obviously the Super Bowl ultimately the date was moved back or what have you, if I remember correctly, and they really haven't had postponements to their schedule since that time. We understand how sticklers the NFL is in terms of keeping things on schedule, but they came into the season knowing that changes were imminent. Week four with the Tennessee Titans, the multitude of things that they had to do with the New England Patriots because of the, uh, you know, the number of folks that ended up testing positive. With the Baltimore Ravens, the Steelers might be incredibly frustrated, but they might be incredibly frustrated because the games keep being moved back a day here, a day there, a day there. But you can't blame anybody. When you look at the Baltimore Ravens, I mean, every single day, there's an additional positive test. So the Steelers might be perturbed. They might be a bit annoyed. But in the end, ultimately, what you have to reach the conclusion of is that, again, we're going through a global pandemic. We're seeing cases spike all over the country, particularly during the months of December and January. People are incredibly worried about how worse things are going to get. And the NFL hasn't been able to escape that reality. They already canceled the Pro Bowl. OK, you know, they anticipate the possibility of having to move the Super Bowl back. They know that that stadium is going to be, you know, Raymond James Stadium, whatever it is in Tampa Bay, that's going to be available. All of these contingency plans have been addressed. So when you when you're the Pittsburgh Steelers or any NFL team, for that matter, because we're talking about COVID-19 in the immediate moment, it might be frustrating because you're trying to get on the schedule. You know you're ready. You're ready to go and the other team is not. And you understand that there's some blame to be pointed in their direction because a few individuals may have been irresponsible. But in the end, because it's COVID that we're talking about here, where you have people testing positive at times and they don't even know why. They don't know what they did. They were wearing their mask. They did engage in social distancing. But who knows? They might have touched the surface. They might have been in an environment where it was airborne. You don't know what the hell is going on. And I think ultimately, at the end of the day, that's the conclusion people will reach once things subside. So I don't think this is going to have an effect positive or negative on the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think what you see from the Pittsburgh Steelers is what you were going to see anyway, whether there was a delay or not. I do not believe that it's going to be because of this, that somehow their motivation is elevated to a point where we're going to see them take something to another level. They're already undefeated for crying out loud. Yeah, before I get into the question, Max, let me address, listen, I don't need you to come at 1030 in the morning. I already got a long day. I know I got a long day with you after what happened last night. I don't need to come on at 1030 and for you to try to take a shot at my wardrobe, okay? You got all your buddies and all your cronies hitting me up on social media about Carson Wentz. I know at 11 o'clock when I got to come back on and talk about the Eagles and Carson Wentz, my hands are full. So the last thing I need is for you to take your shot at my jacket, okay? It's a free jacket. I want to wear it. Now, now to the question. Um, <laughs> The, okay. I think there's Noted. really two big ramifications with what's going on in this game. With what's going on in this game. One, this is really, really damning for the Baltimore Ravens. I mean, this is a team that's the number eight seed in the playoffs. And their chances of winning this football game are less than 1%, less than 
I mean, so you're talking about a team that because of COVID and because of the rules and the protocols and the constant postponement of the game, that they're going to be without some really key players. They're going to lose this football game sitting at six and five and now likely going to be sitting at six and six as the eight seed, which is going to be a, a, a huge game. I mean, we're talking one game could be the difference between not just getting the one seed and winning your division, but getting into the actual playoffs. And so this game is going to be huge, a huge mountain for them to climb afterwards to try to get back into the playoff race because you're talking about Las Vegas and potentially New England being back into the picture because of it. And the second thing that I think of is this. This needs to be, in many ways, a warning sign or a... a, a, a because I sit back and go, okay, maybe in week 11 or week 12 to the Baltimore Ravens, who might not be one of the glamour teams of the NFL, I don't want to say that, but like a, a team that's expected to win the Super Bowl this year, it might be somewhat easier to postpone this game. But what happens if it's week 16 or week one of the playoffs and it's Patrick Mahomes and there's this constant, okay, Monday there's positive tests, Tuesday there's positive, Wednesday... Are they just going to constantly push playoff games? What happens if it's Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers? So this needs to be a really big moment for the NFL to go, how can we learn to better protect ourselves when we get into a moment where these games can't just be pushed three or four days because of the competitive advantage and disadvantage of win or go home scenarios? And that's the playoffs. So this, this is, is huge for the Ravens, a huge detriment for the Ravens, but also the NFL needs, it needs to learn from what has happened over this past 10 days with this game. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.